Let's do this. Let's get into the book of Ephesians for a little bit. Let's talk about that. We we have been trying to go through the book of Ephesians together, and I have I certainly have enjoyed this book. I'm going to give you some thoughts. Now, last week, uh, we went to Ephesians chapter number 2, and we did not get all the way through, but I want to... I want to try to get into this stuff a little bit. And uh, we stopped at verse number 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works with God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And so that's a very, very great verse right there. I, I, I love that. And I, I love the fact that there are no works before salvation. It says, For by grace you are saved through faith, not of yourselves to get to God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So there's no works before salvation, uh, but there's a lot of works after salvation. Uh, we are as workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. God created you and saved you for a purpose. And uh, your, your job now as a Christian is to find what God saved you for and find that high calling that God has given you. Now, Paul talks about that Ephesians, or excuse me, Philippians chapter 3. He says, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And, uh, and so that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to, once we get born again, we're supposed to find out what is it God had for us to be born again. What is it God wanted us to do? And uh, that's what we need to do and need to work on all that and try to find that out. And uh, so that's very good. But we're going to start in verse number 11 today, trying to get through the, the rest of the chapter if we can. And, um, man, there's so much heavy stuff here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. And uh, it's just it's so good. Let's just talk about this here. It says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, and the flesh made by hand. So uh, that's, that's talking about the relationship that we have uh, with the Jews. The Jews, we called us the uncircumcision. And uh, which is called the circumcision in in the flesh made by hands. So uh, that's talking about the Jews would call us the uncircumcision. That's what that's talking about. And then verse number twelve, it says, "In that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant promise, having no hope, and without God in the world." I like that word alien. Um, I've got a friend. <laughs> he he was a, a Mexican. And uh, he was a pastor at a church for a little while, and uh, he he would preach all this passage of scripture and talk about he want him being lost and now he's found. And he uh, he was a Mexican. He'd go around preaching in here in Kentucky, and he'd preach a message called "I Once Was an Illegal Alien." <laughs> we had a lot of fun with that, and uh, so he 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 was a lot of fun. But yeah, that's what we were. We were aliens. We were ones who uh, we couldn't. We had no benefits of being a part of the commonwealth of Israel. And that word commonwealth, that's what actually the, the state of Kentucky is actually called the commonwealth of Kentucky. And uh, and that's, you know, I'm actually a citizen of the United States of America, but I reside in the state of Kentucky, so I'm a benefit, beneficiary of the commonwealth. And it says, And strangers of the covenants of promise, and, and notice is having no hope. Without God in the world, and so you know the, the problem today is a lot of these lost people they they despair and they, they they a lot of them prep and all this kind of stuff, and and it just worries them to death because they have no hope, and uh, they're trying to make the world a better place, but the problem is they don't have any hope after after that. It's a it's a terrible way to live, you know. Hope is something that once you lose it, you you basically have lost everything. I remember, I remember reading an illustration years ago about hope and what hope meant and why you need hope. Uh, I remember hearing about a scientist that would take a 55-gallon drum and fill it about halfway full of water. And what he would do is he would take he would take rats and put them in that 50-gallon, 50 uh, 55-gallon barrel of water. And what he did was he timed them and tried to see how long, and from the time I put them in the water to the time they drowned, and he measured that time. And what he did was <clears throat> he took another batch of rats and put them in that water. And he found out that, okay, I'm going to wait. Let's just say that it took an hour for those rats to drown, the first batch. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first batch of rats and put them in there. In about 55 minutes, I'm going to rescue these rats. And so he put them in there. And sure enough, they struggled and swam and struggled and swam for 55 minutes. And then he rescued them, picked them up, put them out of there. And then he waited a week later, and he found out this. He said, um, "He said I'm going to put that same batch of rats that I rescued last week, I'm going to put them back in that water, and we're going to time how long they can last. And he said that they lasted over two and a half hours after that. And he said the problem was the first batch of rats died 
because they didn't have any hope. But the second batch of rats, they lasted and endured so much longer because they did have hope. They knew that I could be rescued from this. And so hope is so important for us to have. And, and when it says there in Ephesians chapter 2 that uh, they had no hope without God in the world, it says, but now in Christ Jesus, amen. I like that. I like when God butts in, amen. <laughs> it says, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh. Notice this, by the blood of Christ, by the blood of Christ, and that's the only way I can come. I've come by the blood of Jesus. That's the only thing I have. I like what it says there in the hymn, Rock of Ages, Cleft from Me. One of those verses says, In my hand no prize I bring, simply to the cross I cling. <laughs> Amen. I love that. The only hope I have is in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no way I could ever come to God on my own works. There's no wafer. There's no water. There's, there's no church membership, there's no good deeds, there's no, there's, no, uh, there's no genetics, there's no family creed, there's nothing like that that I can do that can bring me close to God. The only thing that can do that is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm getting to where I'm feeling pretty Pentecostal right now. Amen. And it says, uh, the only way you can come is by the blood of Jesus. It says, for he is our peace, for who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle of wall of partition between us. And what he's saying there, the, the partition between us is between the Gentiles and the Jews. That's the wall of partition. You know, in the Old Testament, God, God rescued a few Gentiles, but mainly he did most of his work through the, through the Jewish people. And uh, that's why God judged them, and that's why God was uh, was tough on them. He he didn't let them get away with sin, and so. But now it says that there is a middle wall of partition that was between us, and it says, having abolished in in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained ordinances for to make in himself one twain men, twain new man, making peace, and might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace unto you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him, that's Jesus Christ, we both have access. We both have access by one spirit unto the Father. I like that right there. There's one spirit. And if you notice there, 2 Timothy 2, it talks about the uh, seducing spirits. That's plural. But it says here in Ephesians chapter 2 that they, we have access by one spirit unto the Father. It says, verse 19, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners. Nope, you're not a stranger and foreigner no more. You got your citizenship card. You got your, you got your, your papers, man. You're, you're legal now. He says, but you're fellow citizens with the saints. And not only are you a fellow citizen, you actually are in the house. <laughs> it's one thing to immigrate from a foreign land to America, but it's another thing to immigrate from a foreign land to America to America the very house that that I live in. That'd be another thing. And so it's saying there that we're actually not only in the nation, we're actually in the household now. That's a blessing. I thank God for that. And uh, and that's such a good thing. It says not, not only is that house, that house is built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus himself, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly, fitly framed together groweth up into a holy temple in the Lord in whom ye are builded together for the habitation of God through the Spirit. So, you know, here's the thing. Okay, the Holy Spirit, you know what he does? He, he doesn't dwell in temples anymore made by man's hands. The Holy Spirit of God dwells in me and in you. That's the difference now. And what a blessing that is to know that the Holy Ghost, that God Almighty, is so big that He can create the whole universe, but at the same time He's so small that He can live inside of me. How do you understand a God like that? I don't know. I certainly do not. But I believe what the Bible says, that I am the habitation of God through the Spirit. That means God lives in me, and I'm in Him. Someone asked a question years ago, said uh, they threw a sponge into a bucket of water, and the sponge absorbed the water and actually sat below the surface of the water. And someone said this, said, is, is the sponge in the water or is it the water in the sponge? And the answer to that was, yes, they're both. The water is in the sponge and the sponge is in the water. 
So here's the other question. Is God in Spencer Smith? Yes. And is Spencer Smith in Christ Jesus? The answer is yes. I'm both. <laughs>